Welcome to episode 41 of the Slab Podcast, where the grades rat matter and there are no rules. How you doing, man? Good. <laughs> Sorry, I had to cough right as you said hi then. Dream this. How, how are you? Man, I'm good. I missed you. I missed you. Well, we almost we almost got an episode in last week, and then I had to go to the bathroom, and then family things started happening, and it just shut it down in the last second. Yeah, I should be. I should be transparent with that. I have, um, I have a, two dogs, and one of them's been very sick. And one of them's had epilepsy for a few years, and it just suddenly started to get a bit worse. And he, right as we were um, getting ready to film, he had a pretty big seizure. So unavoidable. They're pretty long and not very fun. So I, I had to admit to that. So yeah, sorry I missed last week, guys, but kind of is what it is. Um, but I'm excited because we've a lot to talk, to talk about this week now. We have a lot to catch up on and move some topics over. And, um, yeah, I'm excited to get into it. Oh, yeah. Dog's doing good, though, right now. Good. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, we, we uh, went and ran around the yard with him earlier. He's doing, he's doing good. He's just yeah, he's getting older. He'll be he'll be 10 in uh, in a couple of months, you know, in, in the new year. So, well, let me know if you want another dog. I'll send you my eleven-year-old uh, yellow lab. I'll I'll ship them free of charge. Yeah, in the crate. Yeah. Uh, just make sure you put this side up so there's no mess. Um, but I don't I don't give a shit about that. But I do, <laughs> I do have another one, and she she's also been sick too with you know other stuff. But it just it's it's just like kids, you know, coming home from school with the sniffles and yeah. the coughs. You know, there's just always stuff. You just got to deal with that, but. Hey ho, we're good. Don't worry. Um, oh yeah, man. You ready yeah, to jump into it. Yeah, lots to talk about. So last week, spicy comments. Uh, neither of us got in the top four, so we took the top four because it was pretty close. We had uh, somebody with eight, and then three people with seven, um, as far as the most upvoted. So appreciate all the upvotes. So lots of awesome comments. Um, SDC came in with the spiciest. Not, I guess it's probably pretty spicy because <laughs> I don't know how true it's going to be because we're running out of time. But uh, he, S, yeah, SDC had said Slab Podcast will reach 1K subs by December. Uh, I want to say we are 550 ish. Uh, that'd be impressive because we're almost a year into this bitch. So uh, if we could double our subs in a month at two months, that'd be impressive. You know what would help is if people talked about it and shared it, upvoted, commented, upvoted their favorite comments. Guys, just, just get involved. If you uh, if you enjoy it and you want people to know and then share, you know, and share it, and you want this to get bigger and for us to do more with it, um, you you guys are part of it. It's not just us. So very exciting. But yeah, love that. Love that topic. I think. I think it's uh, doable, uh, you know. Uh, honestly, I really think it is. I think enough, enough of us know one person that all five hundred of us could get <laughs> that one person to subscribe and start listening. And hey, hell, that seems pretty easy. Hell yeah! I'll let you read the next one. Kind of not related to me at all. Basic, basic trainer. He's a little tinker. But Basic said, if Oak drove on a Texas highway, he would cause a 69 car pileup. I think, I don't think he's referring to me driving the speed limit. I think it's because um, people would like my Pikachu sticker on the back of the car. That's probably what it is. Mm. I'm going to give him that. Possibly. I feel like Pokemon's very popular in uh, Texas, in the state of Texas. So could be. Please? I feel like it's it's a mecca for TCGs, to be honest. Yu-Gi-Oh! was always very popular down there. Hmm. Um, strange, but it is huge, I feel like, for Pokemon. That's why they usually have Texas, uh, Houston, and Dallas Collecticons. That's the only state with two. Um, maybe they're from there. I don't know, but it's what pretty. Sports? Yeah, Dallas Card Show Monthly. There's big, big sports shows there, right? Big yeah. ones. Yeah, no, it's 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 a strange place, Texas. Couldn't never pay me enough to live there in that Sahara Desert, but yeah, cool. it's, it's definitely 
did it it did it used to be Mexico? <laughs> Isn't there like some weird geographical history there where it used to be like part of Mexico and then the US like captured it or whatever? I have no clue. I'm pretty sure. I'm sure at some point I remember yeah. Some there was definitely some battle down there and there's some yeah. Something happened. And now Texas, was shed. Want, Texas wants to be its own country now, right? They want to split off from the US or something. So does Cali and Cali basically has. I mean California is its own world for sure. Yeah. Their own rules like it's like the UK yeah. and the uh Brexit. All that. Yeah, the Brexit, right? So <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. Crazy for sure. Um it's the crazy. other one Mason, seven upvotes, tied with Basic Trainer. He said, Scarlet Violet's ancient slash future Pokemon are cooler than other generations' Mega and VMAX Pokemon. <sighs> Finally, a spicy topic, right? I want, um, I, want an, I have a very strong opinion on this, so I want to, I want to know yours first. My opinion is completely agree with the son of a gun. Oh, okay. Uh I am never never was a big Mega or V Max like just making them fatter like what a, it's woo um not a big fan I like the different aspects I like seeing little different variations like a dinosaur version of this or an alien version of this it's pretty cool um haven't looked into much of the newish set because I feel like that is like it's the first set where they're showing some of them I'm not sure but. Um. Yeah, really looking forward to seeing some of that stuff. Yeah, what about you, definitely been trickling things out, but which I kind of like. You know, they're not just throwing it all at you in the first base set. Um, I have a feeling there's going to be some pretty big, some pretty big cards coming. You know, in these next couple of sets as they start to get going. Um, but yeah, yeah thanks, Mason, fellow, um, slab podcast host. I think. I feel very strongly um, in agreement with that. When I've looked at what the Pokemon are and like what they do, I think they feel more like Pokemon <laughs> than some of the the Mega uh, V Max stuff. You know, when I think of like Charizard losing its wings and just like some of the simple changes that I don't know, I, like they're okay. I've always thought they're okay, but. I haven't ever tried to chase them or collect them. Like I've, I don't really have any interest in the V Maxes, the Megas, any of that kind of stuff. It just feels a little bit like too extreme for what it really is. It honestly, it just feels a little over the top. Um, I think what's the American word like gaudy? Is that right? Like it just feels a little bit like too gaudy. Yeah. Yeah, gaudy. Like you're trying to be a bit too crazy with it. So not yeah. for me. But I, I also like I don't hate it. I don't think it's like the worst thing. Um, it just but it just make like what you know speaking to what Mason's saying, it does make these these newer ones in this set um, and some of the you know older ancient ones from um, from the set too. It does make them seem better. So yeah, I completely agree. And Mason's really got you know, his finger on the pulse with a lot of this stuff because he's having these conversations with people. So I'm sure an element of that, like he's hearing from other people too. You know, I'm sure he's like in, in a lot of those conversations, players and collectors and people buying it for others, gamers, like he's, you know, surrounded by it, isn't he, every day. So, um, yeah, I feel like, I feel like this is the first time we've ever had something in Pokemon where it, like changes the actual Pokemon. Like everything's always been right. an EX or a V or a V Max or a Gig or whatever, a Mega. Every single one of those is just like a buffed up version of the regular Pokemon. So this is yeah a different step for like the first time. And it's creative. I'm here for it. Yeah. It's creative. It kind of takes it out of the like you say, just making it bigger. Like or more extreme, you know, just like, like adding stuff or whatever. Um, yeah, bigger is not always better. Apparently, <laughs> um, but to that, I do, I do think we're going to get some pretty crazy cards that are going to be 
pretty pretty sweet uh, i'm excited for these next few sets um but we'll talk about that a little bit more later so let's jump into professor birch run it also with seven votes thank you fellow professor um he said people claim to be pokemon fans but don't play the video games watch the anime or play the tcg seems sus so excuse me i am i'm a fan of a few things but i don't do everything around it but i do do all that stuff for pokemon <laughs> and i call myself a fan so i i think this is a tough one for me pokemon fan it's just very generalized like you just like pokemon i mean i think you could apply that to one or all of those like for me i play the games or watch the show you know i play the tg you know the game on my phone and stuff i don't play it in person really um but i collect cards i collect artwork i collect memorabilia statues like i've got I, so much crap i can see right now but i'm i'm definitely like a pokemon fan but i don't think i would call I would say someone that's like sus if they didn't play the games. It feels spicy. Which of of those three you do all of the above? Yeah, I mean, it, he didn't mention collecting cards, but that, that's a fourth one too. You know, collecting Pokemon stuff. Uh, I'm literally wearing Pokemon T-shirt right now, and. Pokemon sucks. <laughs> like, I'm a Pokemon fan. <laughs> like, who walks around the house with Pokemon socks on? You need to look at my underwear. Check this shit out. 25th yeah. anniversary of Pikachu <laughs> specialized socks. Like, people just don't do that. So, I call myself a fan, but I don't think not doing one of those or not doing two of those means you're not a fan. I, I don't think. I think I'm just more like... Like... It could apply to anything, kind of view on it. I don't know. What about you? Um, people claim to be Pokemon fans, but don't play the video games, watch the anime, or play the TCG. Seems sus. Um, like, you mean all? If I feel like if you do any of those three, play the video game, watch the show, or play physical TCG or on the phone. You're entrenched in Pokemon. Like, you're a fanatic, basically, I would say. Um, I would say somebody who's just casually collecting, they're a fan. But somebody who's doing, like, one of those, consuming one of those medias, video games, TCG, or the anime, like, you're, like, almost obsessed. Like, there's something inside of you. Where you're, you just can't get enough Pokemon, and you're like balls deep in the freaking Pokemon. So the video games, I've done it. Last one was, I don't, which Black and White came before Diamond and Pearl. So I played Diamond and Pearl, I think. Dialga, yep. Um, so played that game. That was the last one I played. I would love to play the other ones. No time. Played the TCG, haven't played in like five months because the app doesn't work on my phone anymore. Um, watch the anime randomly with my kids now. That's about it. So, I don't know. I think I'm probably <laughs> a fanatic because of how much time I spend with the crap. But, yeah. I think you can be a fan and not do any of those. Yeah. There's other ways i guess fans are on, fan, a fan is on the sidelines cheering it's not the player well like you're not balls deep you're like you don't have to be balls deep to be a fan yeah i think i agree come on birch <laughs> next week's spicy effing topic Want me to go? Up to you. Go for it. Let a rip tater chip. Okay. Gonna piss some people off. Sorry. Oh, no. Earmuffs. Earmuffs, people. Earmuffs. Don't listen. Just listen next week. Um, 
if you are dealing sports cards, you might as well just go bet your money at the casino. Strong one. Solid. Yeah. No, I think uh, good stuff. <laughs> I'll go. Run it. Um, I think the majority of people underestimate and undershare how difficult it is to make money in this hobby for most people. Well put, Mason. Well put. It's good stuff. Uh, yeah, so well, there was some big news that just popped today. You want to want to run us through some of that? Big news. Yeah. Big, um, like. Da -na -na, da -na -na. What's super interesting is that the news only came out now because of what happened with it. So for those that haven't seen, aren't aware um, of, you know, keeping on top of stuff, I know it's hard with like so many different changes and everything going on right now, um, constantly, all the time. But um, there was not one, but two pre-release Raichus graded with CGC, um, which is something that, has been deliberated on whether it even exists, whether it's a myth, a legend, whether there's several. That, like I think one What's the employee said there was 11 that got leaked from, from the print facility uh, by staff. I've heard all different stuff, uh, read different things from different people, different comments, takes, views, whatever. Um, but the CGC graded to um and they were both uh i pulled the statement that david persons is the person that bought them um and i'll just i'll read this real quick from uh Puga beach so it said the first pre-release raichu was analyzed by cgc and it was sold by mike boozer in 2006 to uh, a card collector who then sold it to a collector named David Person in 2009 for $10,500. Um, I follow David on Instagram. We'll try and link it in Instagram, uh, his Instagram below for you, so you can follow him too. He's on a mission basically to be the, the very best, like the, yeah, the biggest collection in the world. Like he just wants to have the best one. Um, so obviously, this is right up his alley. Um, the second Raichu, it says, uh, was also bought by David and from um, another Watsi employee for 20000 back in 2018. So this is pre-boom. Um, he bought it for 20000 And then um, he's now sent them over to CGC, had them both analyzed, authenticated, graded. I think one hit a 5.5, one hit an 8 if I remember right, or something eight, like that. Five? Or maybe it was eight, an eight. Five, something like that. Um, not crazy high grades, not terrible low grades, but like clearly have been used and held and, you know, looked at whatever. Not not perfect, but they're also not production cards. <laughs> they were just made, you know, to test the mach machine and sheets and foil and that kind of stuff. What's very interesting, when you look at CGC's, pictures they've got pretty clear pictures the hollow four is a bit weird because it's got that like greeny looking um color to it but the stamps are in different places which feels a little sketch to me that they'd be so far off that like the the naked eye could see it i thought that was a little bit odd but all in all i mean i think i trust that david persons did his due diligence and he didn't rush to try and grade and sell them i don't even think he's going to sell them um yeah. i don't think he's going to sell either of them you know and i think he has two which makes me feel more confident that he's very confident that they're they're legit and real um and obviously it's great for cgc 
have it in their slab and you know over PSA for, you know for people to be sending that kind of stuff to them it's it's great marketing so they were probably pretty excited to do that research and dig into it but this feels like much bigger news than than like how much I'm hearing about it I feel like not many people are talking or I saw a little bit in Discord earlier but it I, I really thought it was going to be a much bigger deal if this ever came out um and I feel like it's falling a little flat, but to me, this is insane. Like I never thought this was going to happen. I just thought it was a myth. Like I, I didn't honestly didn't genuinely believe there was one out there, no matter two. So I'm curious what what your thoughts were with David having both pre boom, like buying one back in 2006, and us never really hearing about it. Um, what's your thoughts? Um. Weird, not weird in the sense I don't know. I just pre release Raichu, like it's always, yeah, it's always been like that card that there was a picture apparently back in 2006, it floated for a second, but I don't know. It's uh, a cool card, low, low pop. There's a lot, there's a bunch of them. He's got a bunch. Uh, I'm really curious. He's got a podcast with Dan, DJ Gigabyte, and David Persons. They do a podcast together. So I'm hoping he probably will. I'm hoping he explains why he graded it because 99% of his collection is yeah. not graded. Mm -hmm. So kind of weird. Maybe it was like an agreement with CGC. I don't know, but um, very interesting. Not sure why, why CGC over PSA. I hope he talks about that too. I would love to hear that take for sure. Um, but the card, it is what it is. It's a, it's a rare card. Assuming everything's legit. have no reason to not believe so, but it ain't, it ain't my bag. Uh, that's expensive. 20 I grand in 2018. Big, big money. Yeah. Uh, I, I honestly think that CGC makes sense. What you're saying, you know, as uh, as opposed to PSA, PSA doesn't do a whole lot of cards that aren't cards, right? Like I feel like that CDC thing to do the things that are a bit more niche, a bit more like out there, take a bit more effort to authenticate that kind of stuff. I feel like PSA would have been worried about that card because it it might be worth a lot of money. And if Upcharge decide, would have been effing atrocious. But also their liability. So I, I think I don't know if they would have been confident enough um, to do that. And I believe they even said once that they wouldn't grade that. I think I believe I read that once that PSA said they wouldn't, which doesn't mean never. But it was I think it was years back they said it. So it could be part of that as well. But I just think these odd. Because it's an odd card, like you said, like it's weird. It just suddenly appeared after what seventeen years or, or, or whatever, you know. It's and now it's being graded. It is a little, it is weird. It's an odd situation to suddenly pop up, and for for you know David Tap two. So yeah, I don't know. I I I I, I, think I was thinking the same. Him and DJ Gigabyte. I'm hoping they talk about it and break it down a little bit and. You know, bring the bring like a more full story to it. But you know who I really want to talk about it? I want to hear PK get him on his channel and talk about it. The right you guy himself. Like I think that would be really interesting because I know he's talked about it a couple of times. And um I think that'd be fun. So what's so now what would you say is the coolest looking pre release card from like the OG sets? I think for me, I think not the Pokemon specifically, but Clefable just feels so iconic. Um, Aerodactyl was one, right? Fossil, yep. yep. Um, there, yeah, the fossil one. I think that might be the most like nostalgic one for me out of them. That did the, you have the one? That was the only one I had. Oh, the Aerodactyl. Yeah, 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 yeah. thought you were going to say the Clefable. 
No, no, the Aerodactyl. That was the only one I had, and it wasn't in good condition. It was, and I traded yeah. it from someone uh, for some stuff, and and then I traded it off again, and it hasn't been too long. I don't think. Um, so that one probably like I have the most connection to. So I'd probably say that. What yeah. about you? Probably uh, Dark Gyarados. Mm. It's the most badass one. I choose a bag. He's a, he's a sissy. He gets trumped by his little brother Pikachu, so it's kind of a feel yeah. bad situation. Yeah, I miss my dog Gyarados. I had the hollow and the non oil. Yeah, cool it was up. a banger. Um, so awesome. Go check out the podcast. They're gonna probably have a, probably some discussion. I don't know how they wouldn't, but that'll be interesting. Uh, just a brief update. I mentioned it. This was supposed. I got this card graded. It was supposed to be a lenticular Cosmo and Wanda card. It's still in my hand, so not too much of an update, but I have an update. I emailed CGC right after the last podcast. I was like, hey, this is not Cosmo and Wanda, even though the label says it. What'd you do with my Cosmo and Wanda card? They're like, yeah, send the card back. We will fix the label and send it back to you. I'm like, I was like, bitch, what are you talking about? I did not, I, like, if you. If you fix the label and send it back to me with a Thor label, I'll be pissed. I don't want a Thor card in my friggin' slab. And then I, I followed up. I was like, literally, like, hey, you can't read. Read it again and then get back to me because you completely did not read what I just told you. They're like, oh, yeah, fill out this thing online, send it back, and we'll find your card. Okay. I, I believe you're going to find that card, but I can't wait. I can't wait to do it. I can't wait to see what they find. They'll probably, I don't know. I don't know what they'll do. Have to someone, buy one off. Be buy one off eBay. Someone has it with a Thor label, right? Like it's been swapped. No, for yeah. sure, for sure. Five hundred dollar bounty out there. Somebody's gonna find it. Oaks paying. Some dumbass employee making dumbass moves. Yeah, so dumb. Whoops. I still can't believe that happened. Whoops. So scary to think of. A really nice card getting swapped like that. The label is another thing that's like inconvenient, annoying, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Say, oh, send it back in, we'll fix it. Or oh, the slab arrived cracked, or the hair in it, whatever. But giving my card to somebody else, that's a whole other level. So. I opened that card on my own channel. I was pissed. I was... Yeah. I love that Even son you... of a bitch. That was the most excited I was out of that entire opening. Right, there's a reason you sent it in. You didn't send it for the for the lols. It wasn't Stonk Dog in it. Wasn't, but let's talk about PSA and their grading. So they're doing you know, Stonk Dogging. Apologize for my squeaky chair there. Um, PSA are doing grading special right now. Uh, I think it's technically a special still, but they're doing TCG at fifteen dollars still. But it's a minimum 10 cards instead of 20 so they just dropped it down to 10 i guess what is that does that help you christmas for christmas gifts or something i don't i don't know what i don't know why the change i don't know what in marketing like that would change on their incoming flow i don't know we're going to get into the numbers in a minute but what percentage of submissions are 10 cards Seriously, it's got to be less. I would think less than ten percent of the total cards graded come in ten card subs. Between ten and twenty. Mm. I'm saying zero to ten because that's what it is. It's ten card grading special. No, you have to send a minimum of ten. Yeah, yeah. Plus- yeah. So yeah. it was 20. Yeah, so you be 20, but now it's 10. Between 10 and 20, uh, between yeah. 10 and 19 cards, you know, you would suddenly now send them in. Um, it's like... I'd say like 20%. I, honestly, I have no idea. I feel like most people that have idea, memberships aren't sending in 10 effing cards. I don't know. Could be wrong, but... Damn. I've mostly done one way or the other. So I've either sent like one, two, three, like good cards to get them and get them back quick at a higher level, or I've sent 
big chunks at the the valuable level. Not yeah, I can't think of many where I've sent like 10, 20, like that low. But there's uh, there's gotta be someone out there. There's a reason they're doing it. They want to get people to send them in. So there's gotta be someone that is grading 13 cards in November. I'll give you one problem. The fucking price didn't change. That did nothing for me. Um, did you see the other special they did or they're doing? Mm. They have a, they shared a photo of like a scratch off ticket. PSA did. So like the first, so November 1st through November 5th was the first line of like 20 lines on the scratch off. They scratch that one scratched off in the image. And the second line starts November 5th and is like partially scratched off. So like every five days, it seems like between now and probably New Year's, um, they're gonna have a new some new special. And I think the special oh. announced on that was like an express or something that's cheaper. It's like ninety nine or something. I don't even know. But another thing that doesn't matter too much to me. But higher dollar thing. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if they did do something lower dollar bulk or whatever. I don't. I don't know. Um, I feel like it's gotta happen. The way they're they're marking this boy, like if you go look at that screenshot they did, they uh they spent some time in marketing making this thing. So I feel like it's gonna get better and better and better as we go through this little scratch off. So if not, then f these guys. F them. F them. Seriously, it pissed me off. Okay, let's talk about the numbers then. So in October, uh, they graded at. Professional sports authenticators, 1.2 million cards. We're well over a million now. I mean, that is that's a lot of plastic. That's uh, that's a lot of slabs. Um, pretty serious numbers. And honestly, like people say, the hobby is dead. Like they graded f- over half a million of those with TCG. I've taken out non-sport. I'm just pulling TCG numbers now from January. Um, thanks for the data. And yeah, 533,000. That's, that's a lot of trading card game cards. A lot in one month. The hobby is very hot still. <laughs> very alive. Whether it's people collecting, trying to sell, whatever. Um, people are still spending money grading. So there's there's obviously something going on. Um, in in the hobby, CDC they did two hundred and seventy two thousand apparently, according to Jimmy, and two hundred and fifty five thousand of that was TCG, um, which means sport and non sport was around seventeen thousand for the month, as opposed to two hundred and fifty five thousand in TCG. So, it, I guess they're a uh, Pokemon card grader, <laughs> like ninety percent. Um, yeah, cards. I'd say yeah, primarily because I know they've only graded like twenty five thousand total Yu Gi Oh cards. Um, I know the Magic's probably a two hundred ish, three hundred ish thousand. So, but yeah, definitely. Uh, that's why they were CGC trading cards, and then they merged with the sports company. But yeah, they they're definitely. Heavy, heavy TCG, for sure. Yep. So, touch on that, too. Obviously, a massive jump from last month. That was a total of 147,000. Um, it appears that after our last discussion, they um, updated something, and it's more clear. Uh, Jeremy essentially put a little note at the bottom of his numbers and said that CGC uh confirming that the numbers I'm pulling are more accurate this month. You know, he seems to have it more accurately reflected from the numbers he's pulling on their part reports. So big numbers. I mean, uh, 533 TCG from PSA, 255 from CGC. I mean, CGC, yeah, yeah doing almost 50% what PSA is on, on trading cards. That's a big, that's a big, 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 Big amount. So that's close. I was I was shocked to see that. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very interesting. I don't I don't think I ever saw them getting that close. Um 
based on the data we were seeing, you know, it seemed like it was going to be a long way away. But I, I guess now that it's more accurate, apparently, um, paints, paints a very different picture. So, yeah, S SGC, they did 129,000 total with just 17 and a half thousand being TCG. I know the very big was sports at the moment. There's a lot of people using them for the black, you know, the black tuxedo um, look on the sports cars. It does does look cool. It does look good. Um, and then BGS did a whopping seventy five thousand in October with almost forty thousand, just a smidge away um, from forty thousand in TCG. So over half. Um, yeah, pretty pretty strong numbers there uh, yeah I feel, I feel like sgc is growing with the tcg because they just announced <laughs> i still can't believe they did it it would piss me the royally the f off <laughs> that they announced like special cheap pricing for only tcg and not sports cards like it was like it, nine dollars right it yeah they literally like really matched low. they matched cgc but their loyal customers the sports guys are getting fisted so yeah, that's gonna suck. Man, that would that would piss me off. Like Especially I would be, as, a, as a group would be, submitter too. If I was like imagine PSA, like oh it would be a revolt if like PSA honored cheap pricing for TCG going forward. No shot. It would be the end of the world. Yeah, I think that's where they, would be one thing, but they're kind of conservative with the specials the past couple of years, it feels like, and that's probably probably plays into that. You know, the mindset and the view of the company is dictated by the prices and the turnaround time and you know that kind of stuff. Um we'll we'll see. I mean yeah. the, those those numbers are vastly different this month from those companies. Um what about uh tag? How many cards? <laughs> You don't know? Nope. Any recent pickups? Yes. Actually, shout out to my own YouTube, which has always been linked Ooh. down below in the description at the very bottom. Uh, I'm going to be doing a PWCC like return. I had like 30 cards come back that have just amassed probably over the last six months, seven months this year, pretty much. And I'll be going through all that. But I'm going to show you one of the cool cards. I had one in one of their auctions was a Magic the Gathering PSA Authentic Christopher Rush signed beta card. The card's beat up, was definitely played with without sleeves, but it's a beta lightning bolt, but it's signed by Christopher Rush. And I like I like like the ink is similar to the card. It's an auto 10. Really cool. I not a not usually an auto guy. Um, but it being a beta lightning bolt, it was cheap. It was like 175, something like that. In my mind, I was like, not not too bad. So I snapped it and on the auction. Um I love it. Got one other thing gonna show. Um big Jackie Robinson fan. So the movie 42, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. I've been wanting a Jackie Robinson rookie card. I every time I'm at the national or wherever I'm at. I'm always looking at the rookie cards from from the years there. The first rookie card came out in 1948. It was like a leaf card, it was called. But you're talking three grand in like a PSA 1, 1. 1.5, like insane prices for damaged. So I this recently went on auction. Recently. I have been looking, waiting. Um, and this is just a Time Magazine of Jackie Robinson from 1940. Oh. 1947. It's a raw one. A what? Is it raw? Yeah, it's it's raw. I didn't know they sold raw. What do you mean raw? Like, you, like it's not graded. No. What do you mean they didn't know they they sold these on newsstands? I, th I thought you said you bought that from PWCC. No, not this. This was off eBay. Oh, I'm sorry. I completely nope. missed that. So the PWCC, PWCC thing was this one. Okay. This was off of eBay. Um, this, for me, fills my gap of wanting one. Like, this thing's freaking awesome. Like, how big it is, I can present it. 
This actually came out the year of his rookie year, 1947, whereas his rookie card was made the year later. So that's even cooler for me. Um, it came out September. Of, yeah, it came out during playoffs of the MLB season that year. This did. Um, very cool. Very cool. Uh, also, first ever African American on the cover of Time Magazine. Pretty cool. But that's the type of stuff I'm looking for value. Um, I'm not selling it. Not looking to stonk dog it. I'm going to get it graded, encapsulated, just like my other magazine, just to have it uh, encased. But absolutely love that type of stuff. My, the it was on auction. I placed my highest bid at twelve hundred dollars because I did not want to lose it. I thought that was really high. I bid really high. I was like, I don't want to lose to somebody coming in at seven hundred bucks or eight hundred bucks. Like I, I could have bought a Canadian version of this for thirty six hundred bucks. Buy it now, but. I ended up winning it for 200 bucks. I was like, Brilliant. no brain. I was like, this is a the biggest W I've had all year in my mind. So I was happy. What about you? Yeah, that's exciting. I uh, That's interesting you're saying about the P PVCC return. I should probably show some of what I got back from PVCC. I already mailed a couple of things out that I bought as gifts for people. But um, yeah couple of cool things um from there i think what was fun was um picking up 151 Th that stuff finally got delivered and i opened some of it um um or with marvel madness on friday night pretty pretty late it was a late one and i pulled <laughs> uh, pretty much like a few of the best cards i got really lucky um pulled the charizard the blastoise <laughs> Bulba saw um even the Golem EX they're selling for like 10 bucks, like you know, pulled those and then also had the Snorlax um stamp promos in there. And yeah, it was just just generally did very, very well. I think the cards from the ETB um I've already sold. The ETB was $59, whatever, 60 bucks. I think I've already sold about $250 worth of cards from that one box. So I've done pretty well. Um, and then because I'm not collecting all the fancy ones, I'm just collecting the 151, like what the 165, you know. Not doing max rarity? Come on. No, I I want I want the set. Like I want the actual like 151 and then the trainers, you know, at the end. Um, so and then the energies I put I got a few i think i got four of the hollow energies i got all of the regular LA energies in it um and then four of the hollow so i got a couple of hollow energies i still need to get and then i need to go through and check which ones i'm missing but that was really fun binding bindering them up which i hadn't really done since for pokemon i hadn't done since celebrations i didn't really bind it up uh as yeah that, so it was it was really cool, like seeing all the new artworks of the OG, um, OG little dudes. So yeah, that was cool. That's been good. Um, and then yeah, not much else. I've just been kind of floating and tracking and throwing offers out there. Nothing too too exciting. I had to get like say a PWCC return back of stuff that had been sat there, but nothing too crazy. Awesome, man. Very cool. I I canceled my pre-order for P Paradox Rift. It's the first um, Scarlet and Violet set that I'm not getting a case of from Pokemon Center. I've been ordering a case of each, and I canceled it. Um, I don't really know why, but also I, I didn't know why I would buy it. What's the promo card that comes with it? I don't remember. I forgot. It's probably something sick. Um, probably. No, I've canceled it. Yeah, I have been lacking on buying anything off Pokemon Center. Uh, but we were just talking about liking the future and historic Pokemon, no? Oh, I think it's not that I don't want it. It's that I don't want to buy it at release at retail. Because yeah, yeah. I have a feeling I'm yeah, to get some from eBay a little bit cheaper. It's the first time where I'm like, I have a, I just have a feeling 
it might dip a little bit. Like I might be able to get just a smidge cheaper and not have to worry about like FOMO or panic. I don't have to like pre-order and get it, get it in. Whereas the other ones going into this new generation, I felt a little bit like I need, I just, yeah, just get it. I'll just pay the price. I'll just make sure I've got it. Whereas this one, like I feel a bit more confident that I'll probably be able to source it a little bit cheaper anyway, you know, after. So, would you be would you be sourcing another a Pokemon Center one, or would you just be going for regular ETBs then? Pokemon Center, yeah. Do you keep one sealed of everything, or I've got a full case of each at the moment from Scarlet Violet, uh, which is four. There's four four in a case. Um, not the previous ones. Not Chilling Rain. I think was the first one they ever did. Josh, I had pretty much one of every ETB there was and every variation there was from um, Sword and Shield and YouTube and Stella Artois screwed that whole plan up. So um, l looking pretty light on, Scott, on um, Sword and Shield right now, but Scarlet and Violet, chef's kiss. So, <laughs> if we're starting over fresh, <laughs> rip that sucks. Yeah, uh, fun memories, you know. Yeah, Paradox Rifts got me feeling some type of way. I'm excited for like, I was looking the other day, like Scarlet and Violet base. I saw in the 70s, maybe I saw it in the 60s on something, but that's like for a booster box. Yeah, it was definitely in the seventies. I thought it was like set. Wow. Might have been like sixty nine bucks, sixty eight bucks. I'm not, I gotta verify. I looked, but I haven't seen it that cheap. But that feels that feels no brainer to me. I mean, that could easily be under bucks next year. Yeah, so it's getting like it's there for me as far as like that goes. That's pretty damn cheap. Um, I do like some of the cards, like the alt arts. I like them ride on ride on cards in there, like. Mm -hmm. Those cards are kind of cool. I like I like that Maridon's an electric Pokemon. I, I don't know electric Pokemon. I get my rocks off, but except Raichu. Um... <laughs> I love I love the new Zapdos. You know, in in the last set that we just opened, I was that one's uh that one's evasive. I have not uh, got the opportunity to open that from a pack. That would be insane. Yeah, you need I... a clean copy though. Like mine was oh, the like, grade, yeah. But for the binder, I don't. But yeah, yeah, it's pulling. Should we open some. Go ahead. Should we open some? Let's do it. How much? You, yeah, just, if you want, rip it. I don't have any. <laughs> I've ripped all of it. You have. Maybe I should rip one. I'll try and find one for you. Rip it. That'd be um, cool. You know, Brad G has one. He's gonna. I'm gonna look to maybe trade oh, really? for it, but oh, nice. Which means it's definitely not a gem mint ten. But he doesn't grade cards. I lied. So I like. Yeah. Um, I like the idea of maybe trading some that I'm missing of just the regular cards. Like I don't even need reverses or anything, you know, to fill it. And if if you did have any reverses that you still need, and I might have. I sorted out all my duplicates. I've got them in a pile somewhere. So, yep. Yep. I'll let you know. For um, sure. Trade, guys. It's awesome. Magic. I don't want to talk a lot about magic. You just showed that lightning bolt um, card. That was magic, right? Mm -hmm. I have a lightning bolt magic card. That's the only magic slab I have at the moment, I think. And it's a lightning bolt, but it's the it was from a festival promo that they did uh, a year or so ago. Um, I love it; it's gorgeous. Um, but they are dropping some pretty crazy crossovers or whatever the phrases they use. So I just noted a couple down. Um, so we've got Doctor Who that people are going crazy for right right now. Um, I didn't realize how much people love that show. Um, but I guess have you it's watched it? Massive. Yeah, I can't stand it. It's like there's not much I don't like, but I really don't like Doctor Who. It, I've never I haven't got into it, but it's just like super 
I don't know. I don't want to put people off that haven't seen it because uh, people really do love it. But it's just like I can't buy it. I just can't buy into it. it just it's just <laughs> like t- it's too far fetched for me. Like it's too it's it's just too silly. Like it's a bit silly. Yeah, Pokemon's um, way more realistic. Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> electric mice. Yeah. Um. You know what I mean when you say if you saw it though, like some of the characters, it's yeah. Um, so they've got Doctor Who drop him. They at a similar time in December, they're also dropping Princess Bride um crossover, which I did not see coming at all. I didn't know there was any market for Princess Bride magic cards, but I guess that's a thing. Um probably have a fan base I'm, I'm sure there is you know i think we have it on vhs somewhere um in, in a box tucked away it's obviously a a, a big movie but that's gonna be a, a cool crossover they also have uh early next year in spring my little pony crossover <laughs> which i didn't see coming either um i thought that was super interesting i guess they'll make them look Maybe a bit more dark and colorful. I, I don't know what they're going to do with that. It's going to be, a, I guess, a mixture of happiness and death. I, I feel like magic is a pretty dark uh, looking artworks usually. So we'll see. Um, and then they're also working on an Assassin's Creed set, which makes a lot more sense. That one I could definitely get behind. Um, I'm just. Damn. Um, Picturing yeah. the views and the characters and just there's so many like visualizations running through my head right now, just trying to think of it. Um, yeah, that's gonna be a bang asset, I, I think. For so any Assassin's Creed fans out there, um, I definitely definitely chase that up. I think it'd be cool. And then also, I don't have that no idea, but I know they're dropping out another a new Lord of the Rings set. So that'll be cool too. Like new cards or reprint? A new set. Like a second set of it. So slip cool. that boy right in there. What about Jurassic Park? Oh, I did hear that, but it's they didn't say it on their site. I was trying I've to seen check it. Photos of cards it. already, but yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I, I know I, I saw a couple, but I because I, I and I didn't spend a a lot of time you know i just pulled those few and i was th- i just thought it was interesting that they're doing a lot of cool crossovers jurassic park i think would be a really cool one just because of dinosaurs i mean dinosaurs are badass who doesn't love dinosaurs yeah so not including di- or jurassic park of the ones you mentioned which one would you think is going to be the most successful doctor who princess bride ponies march or ponies and uh probably doctor Assassin's who Street. Bag. Um, I think the video game crossovers they could do could get filthy. Like I was thinking a Master Chief card, Halo. Oh. Like you could do even GTA five characters. My god. Oh, god. Like it would it would be so cool. Oh yeah, G- yeah, a game like that. That could oh. get nasty if they started doing a lot of video game crossovers. Because Assassin's Creed's just the that's just the tip. You're giving me just the tip. I, I want, I want the base. Give me, give me that. Like that would be sick. We'll see. They, uh, no signs of stopping them. I guess they, they're plugging into quite a few different IPs. They're going in a lot of different directions. So I don't know. We'll see. It's gonna be super interesting. I can't imagine them doing one with like Pokemon or Digimon or. Yu-Gi-Oh or anything that's like in that like similar kind of frame, but who knows? Yeah, no, it's it's cool. It's different from Pokemon. Like Pokemon can only do ponchos of characters because Pokemon are just Pokemon. You can't have a Mario card inside a Pokemon because it's it's not a Pokemon. So it's yeah. it's interesting for Magic the Gathering because they have to do actual characters from different games. And it brings two different communities together when you do that. You have the Magic Gathering people busting over it, and then you got 
the video game people or the My Little Pony stalkers, like Dan Catch Them All Collectibles and all the people like that just jumping balls deep into it. So that'll be really cool to see how that takes off. Very cool. Yeah, I guess they're not going to do Hello Kitty. No, no. Sonic? Rides, rides been waved. Full art knuckles, bro. Damn. Mm. That'd be so cool. Yeah. Is. Um, anyways, I'm gonna talk a little bit of give some little life updates, different things going on. So um played in another Yu-Gi-Oh tournament uh last Friday. Yeah. It'd have been all oh, been like a week and a half ago, not a week, whatever, I don't even know. But yeah. I played in another Yu-Gi-Oh tournament, physical cards in person. Uh, made the top four, made money because it was a hundred percent cash payout. Uh, made fifty five bucks, which was pretty cool. Sweet, um, yeah, brilliant. So it's fun, man. I I just I miss playing cards. Um, it's like an hour drive, so it's I won't be going every Friday. Like I'm not going this Friday because Collecticon's coming this Friday. But um, shout out to all the people going out to Houston. But I love playing cards. Physical cards is awesome. Pokemon's it's fun, but I I just like getting uh, getting together with the boys and being able to clap some cheeks in person. It's cool. It's fun. How did you win? What was the what what gave you the edge? Did you have a better deck, or did you do a different type of strategy, or like what what was the factors that you think? Was there's the a lot. It's like it, every TCG, there's a lot of luck. Yeah, Pokemon Don't a little. Bad. There's still there's tons of luck, but it's so easy to draw cards in Pokemon. You can draw into your combo mm -hmm. nine out of ten times or whatever, right? To set up and Yu Gi Oh is a lot of luck because you only start with six cards in a forty card deck, and you can maybe draw one or two extra cards a turn, maybe one. Um, so it's it's completely different. So it's just a lot of luck based. I'll use one deck. I'll use the same deck the next week, and I'll get clapped. In the next next week, I'll go four and zero. So, it's it's kind of weird, to do be honest. Play, do you play the app on your phone too? Like for, for, for Pokemon? No, for Yu Gi Oh. So there isn't really one. Uh, there's one. So the format I played is back from 2005. So they don't technically don't have a, a Yu Gi Oh game app for that format. There's a website that I can go to, like desktop simulator, and play it. There's a ranked ladder and everything for it, so I do that, but I can't play it on my phone. Just play Golf Clash on my phone, basically. Yep, I remember you saying that now, actually. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yep, yep. So that's happening. Um, just did my first ever live stream for ZNG Emporium's auctions. Uh, not sponsored whatsoever, but yeah, very cool. It was a cool change up going from looking at pwcc auctions because i just streamed the whole auction really like pwcc beginning to end because it only takes about an hour and a half for the zng one i was able to look at like 800 cards that had just sold that day which was a really cool thing to be able to do look at modern vintage all these different things different grading companies Yu-Gi-Oh, pretty much just Yu-Gi-Oh and pokemon was the main thing um but getting all that mashed together was pretty cool to check out um and it made for i thought pretty pretty fun stream so and yeah just youtube in general this past week has been probably the most active in a long time i think i did like three or four uploads so it's been fun uh digging in it's been uh, i miss it dearly so um gonna keep try keep on keeping on keeping on but at least the video a week and then the live stream but i'm hoping to do uh on top of the podcast so hoping to do more than one a week for sure. I enjoy multiples and I used to be multiple videos a day guy, but that ain't it. What about yeah. you, man? Yeah, I, I think um, I enjoy uh, obviously you posting content, but I would never want you to feel like uh, I know some people have felt that have got like done really well with YouTube. <laughs> they felt almost like there's a pressure to like maintain that and like keep doing it keep posting i know like youtubers have made comments and like you know had like conversations and stuff live about that kind of stuff so don't don't ever feel like you have to but honestly like i'd love if you 
did 10 videos a day like i'm sure most people would you know there's, there's only so much to talk about but i know you're busy all over the place doing yeah. a lot of stuff um not all good yeah not all good videos this week you know uh good news so there's a couple of l's yeah so posting yeah. posting some of the l's is, is part of the it's It'll be cool to look back on like, God damn, I was a dumbass. Like, what was I doing? That'll be funny. Yeah, I actually here, let me slide over. Ooh, let me grab this real quick. All right, good. I got I got a box. Not my handwriting, you're good. I need to uh open that. That's a very special box that I got. So at some point, hopefully. This week, um, I'm going to open that and maybe I'll flash a couple of things that I got back from PWCC that I haven't already sent on to people. Um, I have a couple of middle mans I'm doing um, for people right now active. I just, got, I just got another one today that someone asked me to put this way on, so I'm always happy to help with that. And then what else have I got going on? Um Grading anything? Know. You got anything out for grading at all? Oh, I got, I got a, I got a pile, you know, starting here. I got, I definitely have some stuff, some Pikachu's and some Marvel and some sports. I got some random stuff. Um, just kind of a random pile of stuff that looks clean, and I want, I want in slabs and a couple of things that, um, I don't know, just I think would be better graded <laughs> you know when they when they show up and clean but not too much selling wise i haven't really been grading to sell as much as i had the past two three years um definitely died down but i've been less active on buying and selling stuff just because life's been pretty busy with the baby um it's this she's been keeping us pretty busy lately so and sickness we've had a few you know, sickness a few times uh the past few months but i'm, a, I'm excited for the next couple of months it's gonna be exciting with uh lots of scarlet and violet sets this year you know um lots of hopefully different deals and things leading up to the holidays and maybe we could get some product cheap do some trades buy some singles create some cards yeah i'm hoping to, to have an active next couple of months um i'm gonna try and make a couple of videos too i've got some thoughts that i want to get out um and i haven't yeah, are you are you gonna do PWCC on Sunday? I'll be home in time, but I'll be coming home from Clockcon that evening. It's gonna be tight, right? Yeah, my wife will probably beat my ass, so probably not. Okay, that's what it is. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, I mean, maybe maybe I'll go live Sunday night. Then I don't know. Yeah, I probably won't. So it's a, yeah, do yeah. it, do it. Maybe we'll do that. I'll think about it. I'll, I'll try and plan it out. All right, it's planned. You know what we should do? I was just thinking. We'll have to. We should coordinate uh, an event with Mason mm -hmm. at his place. Probably get like seven people to show up, but that'd be pretty cool. Oh, like a literal in-person event. Yeah, we'll sponsor. Bring some pizzas. That'd be amazing. trade night, game night. I feel like we said that a while back. I feel like yeah, we, we but nobody, nobody, idea. nobody is picking up the ball and running. Let's uh, start talking. I feel it. I'd, I'd love to. We could do the secret Santa in person. That'd be tough. <laughs> That'd be too short. Maybe too short notice. I was thinking like middle of next year. I'll give people. Give yeah, that'd be cool, Mason. Summer. Let's, let's do it. Summer. Why not? Collecticon Cardinal. We need it's it's a nice central location, I feel like. Louisville. Yeah, we'll have to think of a name for it. Let us know down in the comments if you'd have, if you'd have any interest in doing something like that. Collective. Not to put I don't want to put Mason on the spot, but I feel like he'd be receptive to uh <laughs> no opening it. Opening his doors to uh, a bunch of hooligans. Yeah, fifty dollar entrance fee. There you go. That'll fix it. Unless you're wearing no shirt, then you're free. But we'll give you if you 
pay 50 bucks entrance fee, I'll make you a custom shirt. <laughs> there you go. You get a slab podcast shirt with your free entry. Hell yeah. For sure. Um, yeah, so that'd be just thought about it, but we're gonna put Mason on it. We're gonna we'll get something done because he's always he's wanting to do shows, but we'll just bring the show to him. Let's do it. It's gonna happen. What else you got? Um, wanted to ask you a random question because all a lot of Pokemon investing things going on. Like I had thought about it. Uh, back, I think during COVID, you could rip out your 401k, zero fees or something like that. Or like, you pay taxes, uh, but no fees, no penalties uh, because of the crisis. Um, but I was thinking, it's like, man, it's like all that, yeah, all that money in there. What would you do? Like, if you, like, you want to pull out the, rip out the 401k, drop that balance to zero, drop it into Pokemon. What would you do right now with your 401k? You don't got to say the amount of money it is. Like, say it's, let's just call it six or a hundred or six figures, a hundred grand. What are you doing with a hundred grand right now? You need to put into Pokemon. What are you buying? Trying to make money. Okay. That's, that's what I was going to ask. It, the, Obviously, the, you're not trying to flush down the shitter. I mean, Unless I want to actually buy the Pikachus that I want to buy. <laughs> like, that's where my brain goes. I don't want to buy all the Pikachus for my collection and some of the other stuff that I want. But um, if I was going to make money... Uh, oof. I think I would diversify. I think I'd buy singles that I think are going to do well. I'd buy some slabs that I think are going to do well. I'd buy some um sealed um some other language sealed that i've had success with and i think is going to do even better in the future um that's another thing that i really want to do more with um yeah i think i'd do a little bit of everything because there's nothing that i would say i'm an expert at but i have a really good grasp on certain parts of certain cards and categories and stuff within each type of product whether it's singles or slabs or sealed like i feel like i can do well with that part that i know well in each so i probably wouldn't want to like take too crazy risk chances on stuff that i'm not super um in the know of you know i don't have too much like background knowledge of uh wouldn't want to like waste it like you say if i'm trying to make money i do it in the stuff where now i can make money and then i'd probably reserve a little bit for speculating on like brand new stuff right as it comes out and trying to like make instant plays with it um on some of the things what about you um like i think you i could easily make the money doing like singles game and stuff but I'm lazy, to be honest. If I like a hundred grand is a lot of singles, it's a lot of effing singles. I'd rather probably just fork it into sealed product, put it inside of a uh, storage unit, and just let the bitch rot. To be honest, um, hundred grand, like, because I didn't say anything about quitting my job. Like a hundred grand into singles is a full time job, in my opinion. Um, I would be able yeah. to sell it and flip it and burn it and turn it. Yeah, it would definitely be a, a small portion of it. Yeah. But yeah, sealed would probably be a big chunk just because of naturally the price of sealed is, you know, obviously bigger. Would do you think you'd go modern or a little bit yeah. older, a little bit of mix, like hundred percent modern, uh ultra modern. It might whether I can find those boxes, I feel like I could for sixty ish dollars if I'm buying a bajillion efforts. Maybe it'd be in the seventies. Uh Scarlet and Violet base, but primarily you 151. I feel like that's the craziest set we've had in a long time. So um, probably go all in on that. But yeah, I, I would be the slow, let it burn and turn, but I feel like I have a pretty good odds of making money if I did it. And I wonder every day I'm sitting here, I'm like, so why, why not just try it? Have you ever thought about it? Curveball. 
what if you took that money and bought modern and didn't put it in a storage unit you put it in a storefront or in a very small office location that was rented and set up uh almost like your own game store your own card store whatever i don't think it would get you fully stocked but i think it'd give you a pretty decent first round of autos <laughs> to start with. yeah but you're talking about then just selling it at msrp or whatever retail I mean, you heard what you heard what Mason just did with his 151 boxes. Like he's no, sold, what he did, he sold like 89 or something ETBs on the first day. He was like people were like lining up outside, crazy. Tell like, there's you can have success with it. Obviously, his overheads are higher because he has it's not all he sells. He sells a lot of other stuff. Um, you know, he has all different avenues. But if you had very cheap location, and because you had a location you could get distribution. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's kind of, I would rather be personally putting a storage unit, but the re main reason is like, I don't want a cheap location because I don't want it to get broken into and stolen. Like I need some type of foundation yeah. and a nice security system and then something, but um, yeah. Do you, do you think it would outperform me for on K? Or could outperform it yeah, with a glass year and a half? Probably that's been dog shit. Uh, I'm like all high risk, and it's been. I think I'm at four percent this year total increase. So, which is not good. I think mine is down. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it went up. Yeah. Um, Last year, mine I think was down for the first time ever. So. Yeah, maybe that's what I'm looking at. Yeah, it was, yeah, rough couple of years. Um, well, we're gonna spike again, right? It's come. It'll it'll come back, right? So we should just keep chilling. Yeah, what goes up must come down. I mean, it does change. It's not a one way rodeo, one way road, whatever the phrase is. But uh, I, I like to think that sealed will do well. I think I'm just cautious on how much to sit on you uh, know because like I, I guess what how i'm envisioning it what you would just say um, is you could get a store from for like a month get distribution and just do a huge order you know or orders with however many distributors you can until you've spent it up and then um put it all in a storage unit like you said and then you can sell it mrs or p and you'd still make a profit or you could sell it at whatever you know you're not buying it MRC, msrp um and then sitting on it i think it would might be a bit more work but it might give you a bit of an edge on the margin you know yeah for me no just because i work full-time but yeah <laughs> the thought's nice when i'm 6 55 and i'm retired yeah. Entertain it. Hopefully, maybe 50. We'll see. Oh, I wish I could retire at 50. That sounds brilliant. No, you will. You'll be there. I've sold, I've sold this, sold this so, Spider Man comic. That's got to be worth 50,000 in a few years, right? The She Hulk stuff. Get rid of the PC you got. Get rid of the, uh, the Pikachu that was gifted to you there on the shelf. Mm -hmm. Start selling out. That's actually from Max. Shout out, Max. Superstore. Yeah. Um, okay. I think we should... Do you want to wrap up with a sports question? Yeah, I'll go first. I got one. Fine. How many games are in an NFL season not including preseason? By how many games do you mean how many games would a team play through a season? How many team? How many games would a team play through a regular season, not including playoffs, not including preseason? NFL. Fifteen. No. Seventeen. I was close. I mean, yeah. 
That was close for someone that knows jack shit about American football. What about college football? <laughs> 12. Ooh, that's a lot less. I think high school's 10 or 9. Good. You learn, learn something, yep. You want to do a soccer one? Yeah, yeah, I know soccer. A football? El um, football Americano? Yeah. Um, What is the term boot it? Boot it? Mm-hmm. Is it a again. boot it? B O O T I T. Yeah. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Am I saying it funny? What the fuck? Yeah, it just sounded funny. Okay. Uh, yeah, my I think I know exactly what it is. I would think that it's it's when the keeper has the ball, but maybe I guess it doesn't have to be the keeper. Somebody that's going to kick the shit out of the ball to the other side of the field. Precisely. Literally, you say boot it. Like, knock yeah. it as hard as you can with your boot. I played a lot of Rocket League, and it utilizes a lot of soccer terms. There you go. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Lot, a lot it. of soccer terms. Go on, my son. Boot it. Boot it! Yeah, the way you said it made it sound like you said boo tit. Boo tit. <laughs> <laughs> like, it sounded like you had the... Wow. Syllable in a different place, but yeah. I I feel like I said it slow, so yeah, it definitely definitely came out all effed up, but uh yeah. No, it's good. Um good job. Kudos. Point to you. You win you in you in the slabbed podcast sports term this week. I'm glad you didn't ask me how many games are in a FIFA season because I would have been way off. I have no clue. We'll do that next week. We'll do that next week. No, I don't do it because I'm gonna Google it. Um did you see the I think you talked about it on the live stream Sunday, right? You saw the gentleman from uh Pittsburgh that um passed ice hockey. Gnarly. So he was playing in the team that I watched in England. He that in was England. my lo- that's my local rink. It's like twenty minutes or so from, from where I'm from. That's that's the area I'm from where he played. Did you watch the clip? No, I can't. I can't bring myself to look it up. I heard about it. I read about it in a few different places. Don't. Um, I've saw the videos of you know the the rink and stuff. Everybody kind of uh, commemorating him, but I, I, I don't. I wouldn't be able to get it out of my head if I saw it. It uh, was not a good decision. Uh, definitely, like that was the most stomach turning thing I've ever watched. Knowing that he passed, it was insane. And at pretty much every hockey league across the nation is pretty much implementing mandatory like neck shields now. There's a bunch of them that already have them. Uh, Canada, two of the three leagues already mandatory. Before but this. It, yeah. But if oh. you had seen the clip, what makes it feel really bad is the dude that sliced him kicked him on purpose. Like it wasn't an it wasn't an accidental fall, like he uh, was he I was fa- he was falling, and then kicked his leg up to knock him down, but he caught his neck. The dude manslaughtered him. Didn't mean to kill him, but he kicked his foot up and it caught his neck. I mean, like, that is he, manslaughter, right? Yeah, it's yeah. He, accidental murder. It, it's it's under investigation. That's what felt really bad. Like I'm like, the dude literally just got murdered. Like it wasn't a freak accident. The dude that fell, I didn't know that. Lift kicked his leg up because he he's got a history of being a dirty player. The most penalty minutes in the league. Wow. He kicked his leg up, caught his neck, and killed the kid. That was twenty nine. Like, if I was that guy's dad, I would already killed the guy that killed him. But yeah. it's insane. It was it was tough I, to watch. The comment Crazy. that I saw, someone posted it. Um, online, I, the comment I saw was that he was saying that the the, the guy that passed did a like he did a bad tackle, like the way they tackled him, like was like in a bad way or something. And I don't I don't know because I hadn't seen it, like I haven't looked at it. So 
Excuse me, that's no. interesting hearing your perspective because that sounds like manslaughter. <laughs> it <laughs> was. Is. The guy's going to get in trouble. He will be oh, for sure. That's scary. That's, yeah. It's... Yeah, and I'm sure. I mean, I mean, there's two sides of it there for the for the players. My my best man at my wedding used to play for Italy. He used to be a professional ice hockey player, and um, he. I'm sure just like any other people are playing and now imagining like that's got to be scary. The thought of that happening to you, but that's also got to be scary. The thought of accidentally doing that to someone like either way, it's just lose, lose. And in those kind of scenarios, I'd be a little nervous if I was a player right now. Like, yeah. After I saw the videos, I was like, Oh, maybe I don't want my son to play ice hockey. Cause he's right. three years, he's three years old. He's been doing all this training now. And yeah. I'm like, Jesus Christ, I would literally lose my shit. But uh, you, you're not the only one. You're not the only one going to be thinking that. That's for sure. I feel um, like it's still not as bad as football, but yeah, it's. I wonder if he if he has any cards, any trading cards. He played on Pittsburgh Penguins for a little while, probably. I mean, maybe even. With That's the dark. Too. That's some dark shit there, Oak. You gonna stomp dog this guy's death to the moon? No, huh? I didn't mean like that. I meant, okay, I mean, okay. I don't okay. know nothing about ice hockey gods, but I mean, like that—that'd be cool. Like, it's almost like a piece of history, you know, to have one of that. If like you know, you're someone that's like his fan, you know, it's to grab his college. Yeah, no, it's weird. Very interesting. Yeah, wow. Well, that's uh, I don't know. It went down like that. That's scary. I don't, I don't love that. No. Yeah. Don't 10 out of 10. Do not recommend watching the video. It'll, it'll have your stomach up for sure. For sure. No, but bueno. I do. I do really enjoy watching people trip over though. Like harmlessly, just like tripping over and slipping on ice and stuff like that. <laughs> looks funny as hell to me. I do genuinely enjoy that. Nice. Nice. Maybe you like it then. You could. No, not. No, no, no. No, like. <laughs> Like whoop, like just a silly like slapstick, like whoop, just like slip in, drop your bag of groceries, like that kind of stuff. I think that's hilarious. Yes, Um, some of the best videos of that are like the ring videos, people like slipping up their driveway when it's covered in ice and just with all the groceries. That 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 (laughs) I like. They just lay there. When my kid falls over, I like I get that like in my chest, like. Are they okay? But I'm also laughing at the same time. It's, That's it's, nice. It's evil, yeah. Cool. Let's wrap. Oh yeah, dude. You have anything else? No, I'm gonna go buy some of that guy's uh, rookie card so I can sell them. <laughs> oh god. All right, guys. Let's wrap it. I'll see you later. Thank you, and don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, leave your comment. I want to see your spicy comments, and like we said earlier, in. If you want to see us do well with the podcast, please share it. Please tell your friends. Please comment. Please hit that like. Support us. Thanks, guys. See ya. Peace.